Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special, unintentionally creepy edition of First Cup. Today is Tuesday, November 27th, 2018. My name's Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. I don't do. All right, hold on. Okay, so why is today an unintentionally creepy version of First Cup? Because if you are someone who listens to it live, listens, watches, if you watch First Cup live, you know that there was no live First Cup today. And that is because the power is out. I was woken up about 2 o'clock to a variety of, of beeps and chirps that let me know there is no more power in this house. Being that Whistlekick headquarters is my home, well, there's still no power. It's now about 6.45. Got this going a little bit late because I had to start a fire. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to very quickly go through and tell you some of the things that I do to make sure that when a power outage happens, it's not that big of a deal. And then I'm going to relate that back to martial arts. Talk about martial arts preparedness. So, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's light. I've got candles, and I've got some of these flashlights that plug into the outlets that turn on when the power goes out. I've got one in my hallway. I've got one in each garage. Well, one in the garage, one in the warehouse. I don't know where the fourth one is. There's a fourth one somewhere. And what's handy about those is that you don't have to work to find them. They're always right there. I've also got tons of candles, which I'll burn just for fun. I prefer lighting the house with candles at night anyway. Not in a, you know, creepy, gothic way, but just a, it's nicer than overhead light way. So what else? I have a wood stove. You might be able to hear that crackling in the background. Uh, that's how I heated the water for my coffee. It's on the stove top. That's part of why it was late, because it took longer than the Keurig that I used to heat the water. Um, but that stove is more than enough to heat my home. Just had to grab some wood out of the garage and throw it in, and bam. Um, because, you know what, I'm still wearing the robe. Still doing everything this first cup. I didn't show you the sign because it's hard to see in this light, but that's okay. Uh, what else? So I've got a bunch of water. I have a I had a pitcher of water on the counter, and I've got my water filter, and use that to wash my hands and get the water for my coffee and. The only thing that really impacts me about this is work. If I have to, if work, I have to leave because I don't have internet. I've got enough electricity with battery backups that I could probably run my laptop all day. But without internet, it's kind of hard. I barely get service on my phone. If I keep it in certain spots, I, you know, it comes through just fine, but it's not... You know, it's good for text messages and email. It's not good for hosting this video. Like, I'm not going to try and post this from here unless the power comes back on. Um, nor is it anywhere close to good to provide internet access to my laptop. So, I'll probably get out of here. Go to a coffee shop, a town over or something. Have to figure out where, where the power is on. But, so... That's my home. Now let's talk about being prepared in the martial arts. We talk about self-defense a lot. We talk about how to win in a fight, how to take minimal damage, how to defend yourself against multiple attackers or knives or guns or sticks or you know any number of things. I've spent time on the show talking about 
what I think is a, a glaring omission in our self-defense education, which is how to avoid getting into those altercations in the first place. Something that I think is far more important. But what about being prepared in other ways? It's a broad subject. We could think about it in a lot of ways. So for example, the most trivial one I can think of, how many of you have ever gotten to training, to your dojo, dojang, whatever, and you're missing something out of your bag? Maybe your belt, maybe your uniform, maybe your bag entirely. Well, keep it extra, keep a spare. Take your least favorite uniform and maybe a change of clothes, maybe your old sparring gear, and keep that bag in your car. That way you always have it. Now, why your least favorite uniform? Because if it's your second favorite uniform, you'll, you'll use it. You'll plan on using it, and that defeats the entire purpose. If it's your least favorite one, you go, oh, okay, well, it's better than not training, right? <clears throat> Keep that bag in there. If it's a, uh, um, if you live somewhere with cold weather, you should have a change of clothes, some warm clothes anyway. I may have made this a little too weak. It's okay. How else can I think of this? Well, you should have a medical kit, a basic medical kit in, in, in your bag, band-aids, some kind of splint, gauze, whatever else makes sense for you, ibuprofen, bag bomb, no, tiger bomb. I mean, bag bomb's awesome. Bag bomb's a Vermont product, but I meant tiger bomb. Um, and that should be in not only your standard bag, but your backup bag, your emergency bag, your I forgot to bring my bag bag. If you go to competitions, you should have extras, extra uniform, extra belt, extra weapons. I've seen all of those things fail before competition. I've seen them accidentally stolen. I've seen them intentionally stolen. And you should have your backup bag in the car while you go to the tournament. So you can run out and grab it if someone accidentally or intentionally takes your bag. We tend to focus on our training. We tend to focus so much on who we are and our development as a martial artist we tend to trivialize the things that we use in our training. And sure, you could train in an open space in your living room in whatever clothing you want. And there are some schools, um, a lot of Krav Maga schools, that will train in t-shirt and shorts. So you don't need you know, really special equipment to train, that's fine. But we all know what it's like to try to train when you've forgotten something, when we don't have the things that we want or need. And you feel funny. Some schools will even punish people for forgetting things. I don't like that. Don't embarrass or humiliate someone because they showed up five minutes late once in a while. If they're habitually late, yeah, you talk to them. But somebody who forgets their belt it's one thing when you're trying to educate a child, but when an adult forgets their belt, I'd rather they come to class without a belt than they not come to class. And of course, if you are a martial artist who is someone who, who you consider yourself someone who would be able to apply their skills when needed, you should be dressed for that. You should be dressed, oh, one of my candles went out. 
you should be dressed in such a way that you can punch or kick or throw or whatever. And if you wear clothes that limit that, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Every pair of jeans I buy, I make sure I can kick in. Not necessarily to the head, but can I kick someone in the knee or to the groin? Yeah, it's important. Shoes. Carry a knife, pocket knife, etc. Self-defense and being prepared are very similar mindsets. Oh, excuse me, are very similar mindsets. But we don't tend to think about being prepared. We don't tend to think about self-defense. So that's what I want you to do today. I want you to take five minutes and I want you to give yourself an assessment and score yourself. If the power went out right now or if someone tried to if someone came in here right now with, let's say, a knife, what would I do? How would I do? And go through that. Those scenarios aren't fun. They can be scary, especially the first time. Super especially if you have children or loved ones who don't train. But you got to think about this stuff. Because by thinking about it, not only do you prepare for that, but you make yourself better the rest of the time. If anybody wants me to do a follow-up on this, I mean, this isn't a subject that we've really dug into. We've danced around it a bit. But if you want more, let me know. We'll do something on Martial Arts Radio. No special sales today at whistlekick.com, though we do have a new one launching tomorrow. So go ahead and get on the newsletter list at whistlekick.com and you get all those promos. Today's episode ran a little long. Kind of thrown off my routine. You can see there's some light coming through now. <laughs> All right. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go figure out what's going on and maybe put on some pants. Peace. <laughs>